there's something unusually rich about the kind of culminating project we have here tonight. Artistic masters have been brought together with a world famous master in direct suffusion with the work of kids that they have undertaken with their teachers and their classmates for weeks and weeks. So the kind of commitment you see from the professionals and the kind of commitment and accomplishment we see from the young people takes the usual notion of a culminating event to a whole new level, not just of excitement, but in terms of establishing norms of ambition for kids that in fact they can do almost impossible things. The Creative Schools Initiative helps students learn core curriculum subjects through the creative process. In Montpelier, at the high school, a team of teachers wanted to explore how walls live in our lives across content areas. So we partnered two teaching artists with a biology, English, and social studies teachers, and they designed a project that led the students to create both physical and metaphorical walls. Eight months before the culminating event, we brought Evelyn Glennie in, our artist in residence, to really work closely with the teachers and really get everybody immersed in her creative process. Once the schools identify the teacher team that they want to be involved in the project, we pair those teams with a teaching artist. And then those teaching artists work with their teams through the whole eight month sequence. The challenge is, how do you bring science and social studies and music and visual art into one and, and this project addresses that challenge so beautifully because the teaching artists are in partnership with the classroom teachers from the very beginning. Working with the walls theme, our teaching artist, Gallery Savore, had the idea to literally make a wall of 14 inch cubes. The students would then be challenged to create images that reflected their learning in the different subject areas and those images would create the different sides of each cube. When the cubes are stacked together in one way, it would reflect a learning thread that the students had in a content area. And when they rotated the cubes another way, a new wall would appear. This is a very ambitious project with four different curriculum subjects, studying four almost completely different ideas and trying to unify it around this one theme of the wall. The level of energy and the excitement and the commitment and the seriousness that these students are tackling this project is mind-blowing. And to see um, their level of interest, where well, they're not just creating a piece of art, they're actually using the creative process to learn more about their lessons. When people make stuff, out of an intrinsic motivation. They want to be involved in this work. They produce better, the attention quality is significantly higher, their grit capacity goes up, and they organize their executive functions far more effectively when they are driven by intrinsic motivation than by extrinsic motivation, all the other reasons we get kids to do stuff in schools and in life. Students are working on saying what they believe, what they believe is important. And the artists are showing them a structure within which to do that. And that gets them focused and excited and engaged. But the aha moments have been watching them work for two hours without asking if they can check their phones. That doesn't happen. Prior to this experience, I found myself being the most creative person in my space, where I would spend all the time deciding on what I was gonna say, do, present, but it was all about me. I finally realized that it's about the students. It's not about what I'm saying. Instead of me saying, this is the problem, this is the prompt, this is the paper, this is the assignment. It was about them saying, here's the question. What am I going to do to communicate this? This is about actually creating. It's like, I don't, we don't even know how to assess this, which is beautiful. But it's a problem to figure out how to make it work in a way that's sustainable because it's so creative, and it's so exciting, and nothing else stops while we're doing it. We have a lot to learn in schools about how to generate creativity and how to assess it. And something like this pushes us toward new learning on a curricular level. The biology classes were studying how cell walls react when they're breached by infection 
and then respond with the support of the immune system. So teaching artist Evan Primo, who is a bassist and composer, worked closely with biology teacher Katie Chabot, and they led the students to create a work, an original composition, about the immune system that reflected their learning. I really wondered, like, how am I going to, how are we going to teach biology through music and teach music through biology? And one of the big things that was really powerful that I re was reminded of was the summer when Eric Booth said to us, creativity is not the ends, it's the means for learning. That was the thread that held the work that Evan and I did together. At the beginning, I think the students were puzzled by having a double bass in their classroom. But the integration, the, the going back and forth between the music and the biology worked really well. I mean, I learned so much about biology. I think Katie would say the same about music. And I hope that the students were able to, to glean both. Each Creative Schools Initiative project has a culminating event where the students get to exhibit their work. And it also is a time for the community to come out and experience that work and celebrate it with them. In this instance, we had Dame Evelyn Glennie as our artist in residence. So the students composed their piece with Dame Glennie as soloist on stage with the student performers and the CEL orchestra with the cubes creating a wall behind them and the student poets reading their expressions of how walls live in their lives. Creative Schools Initiative is so important, not just for the youngsters, but also for the teachers. What's so valuable about this project is that it is all about inclusiveness, it really is. Everything is linked, you know, it isn't music and oh, there's science over there, oh, and there's, you know, English over there, oh, there's drama or dance or whatever. This has probably been the best example of inclusiveness that I've ever come across. Is it too unprofessional to say hell yeah?